The Honourable Paul Goldsmith. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, uh, I, I suppose it is the opposition's job to uh, speak negatively always about the country, but uh, I was a bit saddened uh, that David uh, Clark feels the need to uh, only ever concentrate on what he sees as the shortcomings of this great nation. I was down uh, in Dunedin where uh, he is based uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and what a wonderful city Dunedin is. And what a wonderful city it is. And I went to the, the university, uh, doing well, doing enormously well. Uh, thousands of bright young New Zealanders uh, setting forth on a positive uh, outlook. They're making incredible strides in terms of, uh, for example, uh, Maori graduates in the medical school and huge numbers uh, and success that they're having in that area of uh, consequence to the country. And uh, w you know, when I look around... When I, when I look around the world, and, and when New Zealanders look around the world, uh, thank you. When New Zealanders look around the world, they see chaos, they see uh, division in so many countries. And uh, most of them, who are generous hearted New Zealanders, unlike uh, that previous speaker, uh, do come to the conclusion that New Zealand is a well managed and tranquil place uh, where we are. Uh, uh, governed by strong, stable government, where where the the leaders of this company, country and the government in this country is united, uh, knows what it's doing, is competent, and is uh, is focused on the interests of what New Zealanders really want and need. And Mr. Speaker, uh, we all experienced a wonderful day on on Waitangi Day. I was down at uh, Orake Marae in Auckland, not far from the Epsom electorate where I'm based. Uh, with the Prime Minister. A wonderfully positive occasion it was uh, with, uh, with, a, uh, with a large crowd, which a large crowd of New Zealanders uh, and Aucklanders of all different ethnic backgrounds all together uh, in a very positive environment. And, and that is so rare in this world and something that we should celebrate. Mr Speaker, uh, and when it comes to the, uh, I suppose, the, uh, um, the research department uh, lines that the Labour Party put together on uh, the leadership of Bill English, I can reassure you that this is a man uh, who is, has a genuine concern for all New Zealanders, who's thought about the issues uh, that New Zealanders uh, face over, many, uh, over decades in government and shows... Well, the best leader is somebody that leads by example, and he is a man that has worked very hard every day for New Zealanders. He has the absolute confidence of this caucus, and we are so much looking forward to the opportunity to have another term uh, so that we can carry on the hopes and dreams that we've, uh, that we've developed over the last eight years. Mr Speaker, uh, one of the main determinations that we continue to have is uh, to grow our economy here in New Zealand because uh, while the opposition can talk about all the sorts of things that they want to do with the money uh, that is taken from New Zealanders uh, through their taxes, the most important thing we can do is ensure that we have a strong, productive economy that's internationally competitive, uh, that can provide the jobs that New Zealanders need. And it's wonderful to see that even in the last year, we've had 137,000 new jobs created by this economy. 137,000 jobs. And so more and more New Zealanders and their families have the ability to get a job and get out and work. Mr Speaker, uh, and uh, a stronger economy, economy enables us to invest in the sorts of things that we need to manage a growing economy. So where I'm coming from in Auckland, uh, yes, it has been rapid population growth in Auckland. And so the most important thing, most important... Yes, and the most important thing we need to do is make sure that people can move around. And so I'm looking forward uh, in the next few months for the opening of the Waterview uh, Tunnel, which is uh, one of the single biggest ever uh, infrastructure investments made uh, by this government, uh, which was held up for many years by Helen Clark, who should have done it a long, long time ago and held it back. And we put the money in, and we're going to make a big difference to traffic in, New Ze in Auckland. And that's just one of many, many uh, investments that have been made uh, by this government. And we're determined to make sure that we can try and keep ahead of the growth uh, that is the reflection of the fact that so many people do want to come and live in Auckland because it's such a wonderful city. Mr Speaker, we can also, uh, when we have uh, a strong economy, we can invest in uh, strengthening New Zealand families. Uh, and again, it's uh, very quick to forget that this was the government that, w that was the first to increase uh, benefits for the first time in 40 years in real terms. Uh, and we can invest in so many ways uh, to, help, uh, to help 
all New Zealanders. And it, it's a, it seems to, incredible to me that uh, it's not recognised the colossal amount of investment that is made by government on behalf of all New Zealanders uh, to help uh, those vulnerable New Zealanders through, through free education, through strong welfare, free, through, through uh, strong free healthcare services and the fact that everybody under the age of 13 can have access to GP's visits and so many ways. And uh, that, is why, uh, that is why we enjoy the high levels of social cohesion that we have. And Mr Speaker, most importantly is everybody wants to feel uh, safe in their homes and that's why I was so delighted that the Prime Minister's opening speech referred to the fact that we are investing uh, in extra uh, police on the beat. In, on the streets, another 880 new police officers who will make a real difference in terms of keeping our communities safe. And I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, out and about on the streets of Auckland. Uh, and, 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 uh, and they will be, and they will be everywhere, and they continue, uh, and, and they will continue to make a, a great contribution to uh, what is ultimately a safe country and one that we, where we do enjoy very high levels of security. Uh, but like everything that we do in this government, we are determined to raise the bar further and improve the quality of what we do. And so uh, that's why uh, most of the ideas that you'll be seeing this year during the election year will be coming from this government, eight years into government, uh, from a caucus that is uh, full of ideas and full of new uh, wanting to raise the bar further. Uh, rather than uh, over on the opposite side, who would, you would have thought in many years of opposition would have come up with some new ideas, but haven't. I was given the great um, uh, privilege of uh, picking up some new portfolios over the summer uh, in tertiary, tertiary skills and employment and um, science and innovation and regulatory reform. The tertiary sector is, of course, in incredibly important to uh, the future of this country in terms of helping New Zealanders uh, into jobs. Uh, and that's why it's so important that we've uh, got an economy that's developing jobs, such as we have 137,000 new jobs last year. Uh, so uh, the tertiary sector needs to deliver uh, the next generation with the skills that they need in a demanding world uh, where uh, I think many people will end up doing a number of things over the course of their lives. So the most important thing they need to uh, come out of uh, university or, or, a, or a polytechnic or a, um, uh, industry training course of some uh, variety is the ability to be adaptable in a changing world. And so if we do that well, we will, con we will increase our productivity as a nation, but we also uh, deepen our, our culture, our, our um, understanding of the natural world and the scientific world, our contribution to global knowledge. So uh, that's why the government through, uh, the New Zealanders through the government make a huge contribution to uh, tertiary uh, education in all its many guises. And, and as minister, I'm determined to ensure that uh, we get the absolute best money uh, value for money for that investment, uh, and that's why we uh, um, you know, just bring a new legislation into the House only yesterday uh, to ensure that the Tertiary Education Commission has the uh, powers necessary to make sure that that investment is uh, wisely spent, uh, and it makes uh, the, the difference that we're looking to make from that investment. Also, uh, we've got the international education uh, side. Uh, again, many thousands of New Zealand families, uh, let's not forget, uh, have their livelihoods sustained by that export education industry, which uh, uh, brought in export earnings uh, by one estimate of more than $4 billion last year. So thousands of New Zealand households uh, have their, uh, their living uh, sustained by this important industry. And we want to make sure that it continues to grow and that it's sustainable. And in most cases, uh, the, uh, a wonderful product is delivered and uh, many students come to New Zealand, most of them go back home, some uh, stay in New Zealand, and that's absolutely as you'd expect. Uh, if you've come and done a degree in New Zealand, you've learnt, uh, you've, uh, you've had a qualification from New Zealand, you've, you've had years in the country learning the language, uh, may, may well be some of the best uh, migrants that we can get. But it's also very important that we ensure that the systems that we have in place there continue to be uh, um, robust, uh, and that fundamentally the main thing that has been offered is an education, not a pathway to residency. And so we're absolutely determined to make sure that the, that the uh, systems that we have are robust. And we've made big changes over the last couple of years in that area, and, uh, and we're seeing changes there. I'm determined as a new minister to um, keep a very close eye on that aspect. Mr Speaker, on, on science and innovation, again, uh, this, this government 
has been determined, has been determined to raise our investment in science because we see uh, the, the, you know, some of the many challenges that we face as a nation uh, as outlined in the science challenges such as sustainable seas and, and resilience to nature's challenges are ones Sorry that are to interrupt New Zealand. Members, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity. His time Thank you very much.